Ladies and gentlemen, very good evening to you all and welcome to this Braco UK webinar on the management of incidental focal liver lesions in ultrasound. Tonight's course is part of the global Braco educational program dedicated to the radiological community and beyond to all practitioners involved with the various diagnostic imaging modalities. Braco's commitment to education has been relentless for decades, always favoring knowledge sharing and innovation for the benefits of patients. So before getting started, I'd like to thank Braco UK for offering us a new learning opportunity tonight, and in particular their general manager, Mrs. Susan Oldham. I must inform you that the webinar will be recorded and that it will be made available online in the upcoming days. Your questions, of course, are welcome. Please ask them by using the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. You can ask them during the lectures if this is a burning question or at the end during the dedicated Q&A sessions. There will be space for uh, the discussion after the lectures. But for now, please let me introduce our moderator, Professor Paul Sidhu. Professor Sidhu, consultant radiologist as King's College has been involved since the very beginning in many studies on the applications of contrast enhanced ultrasound. Personally, I had the privilege to learn from him as I was working as a research scientist on the clinical development of Son of You, as a worldwide recognized expert in the field, Prof. Sidhu is one of the authors of the guidelines and good clinical practice recommendations for contrast enhanced ultrasound of the liver from the World Federation for Ultrasound and Medicine and Biology. He will guide you through tonight's course, which I hope you will enjoy and benefit from. So Paul, the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Jerome. It's a great pleasure to be chairing this session and also speaking in this session. The topic, uh, the general topic tonight, I think is very good because it's going to be very beneficial to practical use of contrast enhanced ultrasound. We've got three lectures uh, tonight. I'll introduce the incidental uh, findings of focal liver lesions and how you manage them through recommended pathways. Then my colleague, uh, Dr. Tim Timothy Yusof, will actually tell you how to characterize these lesions and how to perform the examination to get the best out of the characterization. And then my old friend, Gianfranco Devana, will run through some practical tips for, for a successful contrast-enhanced ultrasound examination. And when we'll round up the evening with questions and answers, please put your questions into the Q&A box. I will answer them as I'm going along, as the, as, um, the talks and speeches are happening. But I'll also pull up some questions to discuss generally at the end. So I know we're all busy people. So let's get cracking with this um, uh, seminar and website. And I'm going to be the first speaker. And my title is Incidental Findings of Focal Liver Lesions in Ultrasound Incidents and Recommended Diagnostic Pathways. Jerome, let's get the lectures underway. I am Paul Sidhu. I am Professor of Imaging Sciences at King's College Hospital in London, and I will present to you the topic Incidental Findings of Focal Liver Lesions on Ultrasound, the Incidents and Recommended Pathways. The talk will, be, of course, concentrate very much on the use of contrast-enhanced ultrasound in the evaluation of these focal liver lesions. Contrast-enhanced ultrasound has been around for a long time. It was first introduced into the United Kingdom in the mid-1990s, and Levervis was the first contrast agent we used. Levervis is no longer available. It was an air-filled uh, microbubble, which did not have a very robust shell, which disintegrated after only a few minutes. Use, when you were using the ultrasound to, to look at mainly Doppler rescue. But since then, there'd be other contrast agents around. 
and in particular you will be using Sonovu here in Europe, but there is also Definity, Sonosoid and Optoson. Sonosoid is an agent that is used in the Far East, in Japan, China and Korea, and it has quite a robust shell. So it's well established in Europe, Japan, Korea and China, but not so well established in the United States. But there are a lot of publications out there, a lot of the literature, and in fact there's really well over 5,000 papers on the subject since they were first introduced into clinical practice. And recently, the FDA has approved use in radiology for Sonovu or Lumison, as it's called in the United States, not only for focal liver lesions in adults, but in children. And this was quite unexpected. What we're going to look at today is actually how you use contrast-enhanced ultrasound in the pathway when you're in, value, in evaluating those incidental findings of a focal liver lesion on your ultrasound examination. Let's actually just take a step backwards and listen to why we should be using more ultrasound in the evaluation of these focal lesions. It all stems from the prob problem that is arising of overusing CT examinations. CT is seen as an easy to go to and obtain examination for all the uh, intra-abdominal problems and in particular evaluation of focal liver lesions. However, in this landmark study uh, published in the New England Journal of Benson in 2007, Brenner and Hall highlighted the fact that with such an increase in computer tomography in the United States and radiation exposure, we are opening ourselves up to a problem in the future. And they estimated that between 1.5 and 2% of all cancers in the United States were attributable to radiation from CT studies. And this is not insignificant. And this is not hypothetical. So it's incumbent upon us to reduce the amount of radiation that we're giving to our patients. And one of the areas we can do this is to reduce the amount of CTs we perform when we find an a focal liver lesion on an ultrasound examination at which needs further evaluation. There is also the issue, of course, of radiation exposure in our younger population and CT scans in childhood in particular, and this is a publication from The Lancet looking at a retrospective cohort of hundreds of thousands of patients where they saw that radiation exposure increased the risk of leukemia and brain tumors in children. And this is also uh, true in young adults as well. And just very recently in Nature and Medicine, the CT risks were highlighted for hematological malignancies, exposure in children, adolescents, and young adults. And this too, again, highlighted the risks that are associated with exposing young people to too much radiation. And it suggested in this particular study that over for every 10,000 patients examined today, one to two of these persons will ex be expected to develop a hematological malignancy attributable to that radiation exposure. Of course, we can use MRI instead of CT to evaluate our focal liver lesions, but this thing then increases further the, the cost and also there are implications with, uh, around the availability of MRI and the time it takes to do this. So we have got um, products and we have got contrast agents that you can use in ultrasound to help you evaluate these focal liver lesions and to stop all these downstream costs associated with these other imaging examinations, but also to stop the morbidity associated with these extra imaging techniques. Iodinated contrast, anaphylaxis, iodinated contrast in renal failure is a, a problem. MRI, gadolinium is an issue long term as well. And if you're a young child who can't keep still, you also need sedation or anesthesia to undergo the MRI examination. So you ought to be using what you have available, the tools you have available to the best of your ability to, to stop all these uh, downstream costs and also the morbidity associated with this. And what's more important in ultrasound is it is patient friendly. So it has an, and you, adding contrast also gives it a lot of advantages over CT and MR because you can do it immediately. You don't need any preliminary laboratory testing when you use contrast agents, 
because they're not metabolized by the kidneys. You don't need to know the renal function. The agent that we use most often now, some of you, is sulfur hexafluoride as the gas within the microbubble, and there is a phospholipid shell. The phospholipid shell is metabolized by the liver, and the sulfur hexafluoride is, is expired in res in, via respiration. So there's no renal phase. So it's absolutely safe in that manner. And you can do it anywhere. You can do it at the bedside, the operating room, the CT suite, and this is the most important all, it's real time. So you're looking at the using the contrast agent with a focal liver lesion that you can watch all the different phases of enhancement and come to a firm diagnosis. And this is reflected in a lot of guidelines that have been published over the years, particularly by EFSM, the European Federation of Societies in Ultrasound and Medicine and Biology. And these detail for you the patterns of different enhancements of focal liver lesions, but also in other non-hepatic applications. It's also important at this stage to realize that the licensing for uh, contrast agents in, in ultrasound are restricted to the breast, peripheral vascular, focal liver lesions, and the heart. But everyone uses it all over the place, and there's no issue uh, for using uh, contrast agents wherever you want to in the body. Remember, it's truly intravascular, the agent. So when you're looking at the contrast agents, you're actually only looking at it within the vessel. There's no equilibrium phase like you have in CT, where you've got some of the contrast leaking out into the interstitial space and affecting the interpretation of that result. So in effect, even though it's licensed for a very narrow area, you're only looking at the vessels. It's just that it's covered by a different organ. So what about the safety? We've had this for a long, long time now, so we should really know whether it's safe or not to inject contrast agents in comparison to other contrast agents that we use in imaging. Of course it's safe. And when you look at the fact that it's a phospholipid shell and an inert gas, there's very little that can cause an anaphylactic reaction. And this is the most recent uh, study on safety, which was published in the European Radiology Journal last year and this looked at the practice in china and china used a, a great amount of ultrasound contrast agents and they reported retrospectively 463,000 examinations and this was just in 24 centers the reason they use so much contrast uh, agents in in china is that the departments of ultrasound are run very differently from the rest of the world ultrasound is separate from the imaging department and the doctors within the ultrasound departments only do ultrasound and nothing else and they do all aspects of ultrasound so it's also incumbent upon them to produce an answer when they've finished the ultrasound examination because they don't have ready access to ct and mri and therefore they use whatever they can to get to the diagnosis if we look at the total reactions there are only 157 reactions this equates to a percentage of 0.034 percent very much smaller and lower than any other um, imaging contrast agent and this is the uh, post administration surveillance program run by uh, braco when you use son of you looking at the safety and the pooled data from two and a half million patients shows that you have very little uh, issues with reactions to the drugs Severe anaphylactoid reactions were seen in 1 in 10,000 patients, but there were fatalities, 14 or 0.0006 percent. Compare this with CTI at native contrast, where it's 0.001 percent. However, all these fatalities occurred using the contrast agent in cardiac work, and all of these patients were undergoing stress echo uh, at the time. And whether or not the stress echo or the contrast itself was responsible for fatalities. We did not know, but we do now because the American cardiologists looked at two cohorts of patients. They looked at patients with doing stress echo without contrast agents and stress echo with contrast agents. And the patients who did not have the contrast agents had a higher mortality or morbidity rate. So there's not really a clear association with this. So you can use this very safely. So what is the evidence when you're looking at focal liver lesions of whether or not 
adding a contrast enhanced examination to your study actually improves what you're doing. Well, let's have a look at the evidence summarized by uh, Richard Barr in a moment. But let me take you back to your CT examination and your contrast enhanced examination and tease out for you the fundamental differences in what you're doing. A CT examination is a snapshot in time obtained by the radiographer or the technician looking to take the image at the time they think most suitable. So you may be doing a baseline non-enhanced examination, you may be doing an arterial phase examination, you may be doing a late portal venous phase examination. But the timing of the contrast agent, uh, contrast administration and the timing that you obtain that image may vary between patient and may not always be exact time you, you want it to actually show the enhancement. But you as a radiologist or the interpreter of the film are presented with a snapshot in time to make a decision. In an ultrasound examination, you are there by the patient the whole time and you're looking and watching the whole procedure as it unfolds, particularly when you've administered the contrast agent. So you are assessing and reporting an image produced by yourself over a period of time rather than someone else. And also in an ultrasound examination, you can go back, repeat the ultrasound, you can record it on a video, you can inject the contrast, record the video, go back and look at the video and assess what's going on over a period of time. But also you can repeat the examination several times using the contrast agent that's available to you. And it's been shown in the phase three clinical trials that the doses that we are using now are much smaller than the clinical trials advocated. And this is because the machines have improved so much. So when we were doing the phase three trials in the late 1990s with Sonovu, the product that is used most often in Europe, we were allowed to give six doses of 4.8 mils. Now with the better machinery, you give one dose of 2.4 mils. So you can see how you can repeat the doses. But in clinical practice, you rarely need more than two doses to look at it. But look at these CT scans here for the moment. You have an unenhanced CT scan and an enhanced CT scan, which shows you enhancing focal lesions, which you do not see on the unenhanced scan. You see the irregularity of the liver. So this is chronic liver disease, a patient with cirrhosis. But what are you comparing here with the ultrasound? Well, the unenhanced ultrasound, where you see clearly the focal lesion, is being generally compared to the enhanced CT. And when you see people talking about how good ultrasound is in compared to CT, you're always comparing the unenhanced C ultrasound with the enhanced CT. Whereas you should be comparing the unenhanced ultrasound with the unenhanced CT, but nobody is going to do that now. So that's why by adding contrast here to this patient with a known, with a, a clear focal lesion, which hyper enhances on in the initial phase of the contrast enhanced ultrasound at 13 seconds, which is the equivalent of the CT examination in the arterial phase. But what you're watching, and you're watching over a period of time, and this is the 5 minutes 23 seconds, you're watching the washout in that uh, hepatocellular carcinoma, and you have no doubt you're dealing with something that's hyper enhancing in the arterial phase and washing out in the late port of venous phase. This is an HCC. It's not that it's unequivocally so on the ultrasound examination. And this is where you're much better than your CT examination to pick this up. Let me illustrate this further with this, with this case. This is a patient who's had an unenhanced CT and you see no lesions at all. After the contrast enhanced ultrasound, uh, administration of iodinated contrast, there is a hyper-enhancing lesion in this, on the CT examination. But what I'm trying to illustrate here to you, that bring the lesion up to the same size as you do see it on an ultrasound examination, look how pixelated that CT image is and how it just doesn't look so good as the ultrasound image here. But the ultrasound image is, of course, unenhanced. What you should be care comparing is, is what you see on the ultrasound examination on the unenhanced CT, which you don't see anything at all. 
but you cannot see any pattern of enhancement within that hyper-enhancing lesion. When you add colour Doppler, and remember you're using multiparametric ultrasound here, call it that, it's not just ultrasound, there is some colour flow in the centre of that lesion. Then we're adding contrast-enhanced ultrasound, and that lesion there is hyper-enhanced in comparison, in comparison to the background of the liver. But you've got this central spoke wheel arterialization. And as you go on, uh, after 26 seconds, the rest of the liver catches up and this hyper-enhancing lesion disappears. And if you look at it on the video, you can clearly see, just for one or two seconds in that small lesion, that there is a spoke wheel appearance to it. And you know that this, what you're dealing with here is going to be a focal nodular hyperplasia. And you can see how the interpretation is so much better on the ultrasound and the contrast enhanced ultrasound than it is on the CT examination. Of course, you've got to be able to see the lesion on your ultrasound B mode to be able to target it. But more and more now, we are using fusion imaging to pick up lesions that are very subtly demonstrated on the post-contrast images on CT or MR to actually go further to do more detailed contrast-enhanced ultrasound examinations of the focal lesion to characterize it. So we're in a point position now after about 20 years of using contrast enhanced ultrasound to say that focal le liver lesion detection is evolved into the single most important application of contrast outside cardiac. It, there's marked improvement over conventional ultrasound in both the detection and characterization of focal lesions. Characterization means you target one lesion, you inject the contrast, and you watch the portal ven arterial, portal venal, venous and late portal venous phases to characterize that lesion. Detection is when you're looking for a lesion that has washed out and there are black holes in the liver in the late portal venous phase, and this is likely attributable to a malignant lesion. And it equals, in or in some instances, exceeds the accuracy of contrast in CT. And this is also due predominantly to the real-time nature of contrast in comparison to CT. It's not a snapshot, it's a video. And also is due to partly to the persistence of contrast beyond the late, late large vessel stage, a marker of the sonusoid space. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. This is a summary of uh, studies that have been available to date on the accuracy of uh, focal liver lesion de detection with contrast. And this is comparing unenhanced ultrasound to enhanced ultrasound. And when we just look at the sensitivity and the specificity in one study from Quare, the sensitivity of ultrasound for focal liver lesions was only 52 to 54%. But once you add contrast, it goes up to almost 85%. But the specificity increases dramatically. It doubles to almost 90, 95%. So adding contrast is both sensitive and specific to the characterization of an incidental focal liver lesion. What about comparing directly contrast-enhanced ultrasound to contrast-enhanced CT? Well, again, we're looking at a different study now, and this is the Dagen study, the German Ultrasound Society study uh, of Seitzer, and they published both the sensitivity and specificity of contrast-enhanced ultrasound and contrast CT. And you can see it's almost in equivalent. They, the sensitivity exceeded that of, of CT in their study, and so did the specificity. But really, there's not much difference between the two. So it's as good as the traditional method of, of characterizing uh, a focal liver lesion, that is contrast-enhanced CT. But it's also very good at picking out and characterizing specific uh, abnormalities, particularly hemangiomas, focal nodular hyperplasias and the malignant lesions, HCC and metastases. And the recommendations that you should be using it more widely, particularly in the USA, has probably fell on, fallen on deaf ears for a number of years, but it's changing all the time. And these are two important, these two important studies out of Germany which did, what established the, the um, working practice in Germany that both CUS and MRI have equal value for the differentiation between benign and malignant lesions, particularly the hemangiomas, FNHs, metastases, and HCC. Very reliable. 
But all in the German healthcare system as well, there is a cost saving. By adding contrast enhanced ultrasound, you, you initiate a cost saving of the downstream imaging that is not necessary. In the United Kingdom, the, the, we've also got the documentation of how we should be managing these focal liver lesions. And we have the NICE guidelines, the National Institute for Health and Clinical Excellence. And in 2012, they looked at some of you and see whether or not it'd be useful in imaging the liver and focal liver lesions. And they have several recommendations. And as you know, if NICE has a recommendation, we're normally obliged to follow it in the United Kingdom. For instance, if you know that the NICE guidelines recommend a head CT for everyone who's hit the head arriving at the accident and emergency department, you have all seen an, an increase in CT heads uh, occurring up through the accident and emergency department. But you're not actually seeing the demand for contrast enhanced ultrasound of focal lesions going up despite the NICE guidelines saying you should be using it. And you should be characterizing incidentally focal found focal liver lesions in adults and also I would say also in pediatric patients and they would probably be more important in pediatric patients. And you should also be using it for investigating potential liver metastases in adults. You should be using it where you can't do a CT or the unenhanced ultrasound is unsatisfactory and is also looking for uh, looking at characterizing focal liver lesions in these programs that follow up patients with cirrhosis. So it's all recommended to be doing this and we should be following these guidelines. And this is the NICE guideline sensitivity uh, and specificity from a literature search and you can see the equivalence is very high between uh, contrast ultrasound and contrast CT. So there's evidence out there, NICE has put it together for you, for which you should be using in your clinical practice. And they've constructed a, 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 the guidelines of how you should be doing this. And basically, if there's a, a focal liver lesion on your conventional ultrasound and you don't know whether it's benign or malignant, inconclusive. And I would argue now that with the changes in the parenchyma of the liver being more fatty, you're finding it more and more difficult to tell the difference between a benign and malignant lesion on your baseline ultrasound. That's almost that you would be using contrast enhanced ultrasound for all your focal liver lesions uh, that you pick up in your practice. So what is this incidental focal liver lesion that we're trying to, to, uh, to work out and, and tell the referring physician or surgeon exactly what it is? Well, here you have on this scan, you have one, two, three, four, five, six incidental lesions that come through our practice, all of whom are referred by the uh, general practitioner. This is a low reflective lesion in a fatty liver. This is an almost isochoric lesion, and this lesion is almost indeceptible uh, from the rest of the liver. But they're all the same lesion, and they are all hemangiomas. And if you look at adding the contrast enhanced ultrasound to this particular lesion, Within seconds, you've developed an understanding and you know what this lesion is. There's peripheral globular enhancement and this is a, a giant hemangioma. And the reason it's dark is because the background liver is now bright. The epidemic of fatty liver disease renders the, the teaching or the previous teaching of what focal liver lesions should look like on B-mode almost obsolete. And therefore, it's pointing to the need to characterize these lesions more and more with contrast enhanced ultrasound. And in the pediatric population, as we see in the uh, King's College Hospital, which is a tertiary uh, liver referral center for children, this is happening more and more often. And we use contrast to, to pick out these abnormalities of hemangiomas, focal fatty sparing, or focal fatty infiltration. How often do you see an inconclusive focal liver lesion on ultrasound? This is a, a study uh, from uh, Willits and, and his co-authors published in Ultrasound in 2015, just looking retrospectively at records to see how many uh, focal liver lesions they had. So they looked um, at 21,000 records and 9,000 patients uh, were from GPs and 746 of these patients had focal liver lesions of which nearly 20% were inconclusive. Outpatients, the rate of inconclusive examinations for a focal liver lesion was almost 30%. 
So it's a considerable number of uh, patients that you get referred who you don't really know what that focal liver lesion is. And I would also challenge you that now, eight years on, these percentages are likely to be much higher. But if you do find an incidental liver lesion, and this is an incidental liver lesion coming from general practice or the primary care referrer, not from your oncology outpatients. And these two studies published some time ago now demonstrated that the vast majority of these uh, patients who you find a focal liver lesion in, these lesions are benign. So it's incumbent upon you as the practitioner to make sure that that patient understands that though you've found an incidental liver lesion, it's likely to be benign and of no clinical consequence. And to be able to give that answer to the patient with great confidence, you've got to do a contrast-enhanced ultrasound examination. The patient knows you found a, a, something in the liver because it's just the manner of which you do the ultrasound changes when you've found something. And if you can tell the patient there and then that it's benign, it saves that two-week wait to see the, the uh, referring doctor, that two-week wait, or if not longer, for the imaging, and some more time to wait for the imaging results and to see the doctor in a follow-up to say there's nothing going on. You're saving that patient all that anxiety for a period of time. And here's a great example for you. This is a 38-year-old uh, lady that referred from a general practitioner with a fatty liver and there is a large palpable mass in the epigastrium which is of low reflectivity but you can see from the contrast enhanced ultrasound which we administered on the day that she was there there's that hyper enhancing lesion there's a focal scar in the middle but more importantly as you start that examination and you watch the contrast coming in there's that spoke wheel pattern of a focal nodular hyperplasia. Of course, your clinicians are not going to believe that you're this good at uh, looking at focal liver lesions, and they go on to an MR and a CT, and of course this confirms exactly what you've seen previously. Here's another patient, a 45-year-old patient with upper abdominal pain, and we're asked to see if there are gallstones. And there's a very atypical lesion here in this lobe of the liver, but over time, as you've, uh, after you've injected the contrast, that globular enhancement in the periphery is pathognomonic of uh, a hemangioma, and you can watch that infilling over time. You don't need to investigate this anymore. This patient has got an atypical hemangioma. We call it an atypical hemangioma, but the development over the next few years, this will be probably be very typical of a hemangioma, not like we've been taught before. Here is another patient, 85 this time with upper abdominal pain, always a chance of this is going to be malignant, but again the contrast enhanced ultrasound, peripheral enhancement and infilling over time just tells you straight away you're dealing with something benign and anxiety is lessened all round. Here is two patients in, in your clinic, both are patients with the primary cancer. This is a 49-year-old patient and a focal liver lesion. This is a 69-year-old patient with breast cancer and a focal liver lesion. Both received contrast with very differing, different outcomes. This lady has got peripheral globular enhancement and infilling over, the, over time. This lady's lesion washes out. This lesion is malignant. This lesion is benign and instantaneously you can manage this patient by directing them further to the appropriate pathway. Here's another patient, again, 39-year-old, chronic hepatitis B, with a new focal liver lesion in the, in the uh, liver. This patient also we used um, microvascular imaging on, which gives you some beautiful imaging of, of the, some um, globular, peripheral globular enhancement around the, the image, but you can see how the contrast enhanced ultrasound reassures you that this is a hemangioma and it's infilling. Microvascular imaging gives you, a, again, it's almost like a snapshot in time of only the arterial phase. You still need, if you suspect that this is malignant and you want to know whether it washes out or fills in, you still need your, your contrast enhanced ultrasound. This here is another patient in the liver clinic. From the same day, he's got a lesion in almost the same spot, but it's actually 
going to turn out to be something quite different because here on the contrast enhanced ultrasound it's hypervascular and arterial phase hypervascularity normally means that this patient has probably got an HCC, a hepatocellular carcinoma. So what about guidelines? Well, there are many guidelines out there to tell you how to, to manage and use contrast enhanced ultrasound and what all the various lesions look like. Guidelines have been issued by Epson for a number of years, from 2004, and over the years they've been updated, extended, increasing the, the uh, practice of roles, and also moving into to pediatric practice and Bosniak cis classification. But what you should be looking at is the most updated 2020 guidelines on how you manage contrast-enhanced enhancement of focal liver lesions. And these are the two most recent papers, large number of authors, uh, had a number of recommendations, 38 in all, um, and just displaying where Sonaview is available across the world, 20,000 words, 281 references, and, and a huge number of authors. But it's very comprehensive. You'll, you'll see that you can pick out any form of focal liver lesion, and it'll tell you exactly what the, the pattern of enhancements are, the washout, and what it's most likely to be. More recently, the American College of Radiologists has issued a CUS LIRADS working group, which also makes recommendations on how you should be using contrast enhanced ultrasound, looking at the focal lesions that may be hepatocellular carcinoma. And the recommendation in the contrast guidelines from EFSM say they should be used as a first line uh, investigations for focal liver lesions to establish the diagnosis of malignancy, which is LRM or HCC, LR5, but you still always need CT or MR when you found this to accurately stage the abnormality. And this is readily available to tell you how to classify them and what you're looking for is to try and see if you can definitely say that something is an HCC, it's an LR5 lesion, or it's definitely benign, an LR1 lesion. And this is where your contrast agent is really good. You have a direction on how to do the examination. You only want to really record it for the first minute because that's where the arterialization occurs. But you've got to go on for quite a long time, up to six minutes for these lesions, because they take a while to wash out. So you have hyper-enhancement, but it may take a four or five or six minutes to, to see that wash out. But you don't continue the scan you intermittently scan because otherwise you'd be destroying the bubbles and you're less likely to get the information you need. And then you look back at the, the charts that you have for these lesions. And if the lesion is uh, greater than 10 millimeters with arterial phase enhancement, then you're going to deal with an HCC. But it becomes a little bit more equivocal in between these areas, whether you can see uh, early or late washout. And the early or late washout is dependent on the differentiation of the cell type in the lesion. Now, I'm going to finish up by just showing you a couple of things that have come out of the LR5 studies. And this is published in, re in Hepatology by uh, Alishik, Andrea Alishik and his, uh, the group there, which we were part of here at King's College Hospital, prospectively looking at the indeterminate focal liver lesion in cirrhotic patients being followed up to see if they develop HCC. And we recruited nearly 700 patients in this study, and it showed that CUS LIRADS characterization provided an accurate categorization of liver nodules in, in participants at risk of HCC. And all these patients had uh, benchmark imaging, whether it was MR or CT or even biopsy for these lesions and appropriate follow-up. So CUS LIRADS, when you have an incidental lesion in a cirrhotic or a chronically diseased patient liver, you've got a good tool to, to pick this up. But more recently, and for data from this study, and this will be published separately, is looking at the observations of lesions that were classified as LR3 or non-characterized non NC. This numbered 75. And these are the problem patients that are problematic because you can't, and you can't determine what they are on CT or MRI and what happens to these patients. But some people say, well, do another MRI, but it's not going to help. In fact, CUS takes you a little bit further in these patients because 
when you added uh, contrast to these studies, 33% of these patients, then you were able to make a correct observation. And this improves your ability to manage these patients in another step. So you only, you're only left with a smaller number of patients that you really don't know what to do with. And it was very, very accurate. So I'm going to end up just by summarizing the incidental liver lesions and why you should be using contrast-enhanced ultrasound. Why? Because it's dynamic, it's accurate, and gives you an immediate answer. It negates the need for more expensive downstream imaging. It's patient-friendly and safe in both adults and children. When should you be doing it? Well, immediately following the indeterminate focal liver lesion detection in your ultrasound examination. All is required is someone to put a line in for you, and the whole examination only takes five or six minutes. And you can repeat it, you record it, and you can review it. If, if CTOMR is indeterminate, it serves as a problem-solving tool, so it works the other way around. And how do you do it? Well, just follow the EFSA and NICE guidelines, and you'll be fine. Thank you for your attention.